grateful. I'm thankful about what God is doing in my life. I didn't bring myself all the way to the last Sunday of this year. It wasn't nobody but the Lord. So since the Lord did it, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Don't sit there like a bump on the log. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. He is a wonderful Savior. Some of the stuff you've been through this year, you didn't even think you was going to make it to the end of the year. But look at you now. Look at you now. All because of God's grace and his mercy. God is so wonderful. Do y'all know that there were people just like you that were here at the beginning of this year, but they are not here? Even in this congregation, there are people that we know of that were here at the beginning of this year. But at this point in time, they are no longer here. But church, just the simple fact that God spared your life just a little while longer. And can I tell you, I got news flash for you. You did not earn it. You did not deserve it. There's nothing that you've done that was so wonderful that God had to bless you to keep you here alive and well. But thank God that he thought enough of you to give you another day to give you another chance, to give you another opportunity to wake up and to recognize what your relationship is with God so that you can make the corrections that you need to make. God is good, church, and we thank him for this day and for this opportunity that he has blessed us with at this point in time that we might come and that we might worship him. For those of you that are watching us via live stream, we're glad to have you here with us, and we're prayerful and thankful that you'll follow along with us and be blessed through our worship service this morning. As always, it's good to look out and to see those of you that are visiting with us. Um, I, I know we have one here who's a co-worker of Marissa's all the way from Alabama. I know some good folk from Alabama. Amen. And she watches us religiously on Sunday morning. And since she thumped the wind, blew her to Jacksonville, she said, you know what? I'm going to Sweetwater this morning. So we're glad to have you here. We're glad to have you here with us here on this morning. And all of those of you that are here, we're glad to have you in our midst. Uh, did anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. I believe you came to the right place. We'll be in the book of Zechariah chapter number four, um, and we'll read beginning at verse number six. If you see anything in New Testament, you're in the wrong place. Meet me in Sunday school. We'll be in Zechariah chapter four, beginning at verse number six. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the Bible says it like this. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And then he asked the question, who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Verse number eight says, then moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, his hand shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear wise and gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful at this time. We are grateful for this moment that you have blessed us with. Father, just some of your handmade service now, Father, have come to feast at the table of your word. Father, there are many that have come on this morning for many different reasons. Father, I pray that you will be God in each one of their situations. For those that are lost and they're looking for the light of the world, Father, I pray that they'll find that. 
Father, for somebody struggling in their relationship with you, Father, and maybe find themselves on the wrong side of the tracks. Father, I pray that their relationship will be mended through the power of your word. And Father, if you do these things for us, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to give you the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let all those that love God say amen. 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 Do you all know that every single day of our lives, we go about and we do things, and we don't necessarily think about where the source of it is coming from. You know, you and I, our wife got up this morning, and we got up, and we, some of us, we got in the shower, and we put our clothes on, or whatever we done, and we just did that. Some of us thought because it was routine. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get myself ready. Then we made our way to the car, and we got in the car, and we traveled, and without any accident or anything, we got to where we were going, and now we're sitting here with our minds and our hearts ready to worship the Lord, and we did all of that, but can I tell you how you did it? By the grace of God. That's what I want to talk to y'all this morning about, the grace of God. And if you don't take anything else with you into the new year, you're going to need to take some grace with you. What is grace, church? God keeping from us those things that we deserve and giving us those things that we do not deserve. How many of us had deserved for God to give us a new day? I, I don't think, I wouldn't be big enough to say that I had earned it. So since we did not earn it, it was God's grace that allowed us to have that. So that's what I want to talk about this morning, the grace of God. And I want to talk to not one time he says here, he didn't just say grace. But he said, grace, grace, a double portion. Somebody holler a double portion. Grace, grace of, of shouting grace, grace at your mountains. That's what I want to talk about. Now, church, there are several kinds of grace that are mentioned in the Bible. Actually, there are four kinds of grace that I want to talk about. And the first of all is a saving grace. We know what a saving grace is. Our faith is not one of works. It's not by works. Our faith is not one of works. It's not one of deserving. It's not one of earning our salvation. But we know that the scripture says that by grace are you saved and not by works. Lord, if it was of the works, we'd be pitiful. Lord, if it was up to our accomplishments and the things that we've done, we'd be pitiful. But I'm thank God that he says that it's not by grace are you uh, by grace are you saved, and it is not of our works. Salvation church is not a do, 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 it's a done, done, done. Jesus finished it all on the cross. Jesus said it is finished. He didn't say nothing else was coming after that. He said, What I have done, I have sacrificed myself, and it is good enough from here until the end of time it's done 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 thank God for that today and I'm saying church not by my performance but by what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary saving grace that's the first one and then we want to talk about another kind of grace which is justifying grace now listen at this verse of scripture he said being justified freely by grace we now have peace being justified freely. Understand that. I didn't earn it. But by grace, we have peace being justified. So that's justifying grace. I, I like, it's just like this church. God cleanses me as if I never seen it. We really don't understand how great God's grace really is, church. His grace, how wonderful. Not only does he save us, but he justifies us before God. You know, Satan is the accuser, and when the accuser attacks us, it's the grace of God that covers us and says, it's just as if they never sinned because the grace and the righteousness of Jesus has covered their sins and washed them away. Now listen, church, this is very important. What I'm preparing you and selling you for is very important, especially for the crisis that we are in right now and where we find ourselves right now as a nation, as an individual. This is one of the most important things that you will learn, church, and that is thirdly, that there is a teaching grace. 
a teaching grace. And boy, this is part of grace that a lot of people don't know about. But it says the grace of God has appeared unto all men doing what? Teaching us to deny lust and ungodliness and to live soberly and righteously in this present world. Isn't that amazing, church? That grace is connected to holiness. That grace is connected to living soberly and living righteously and godly in this present world, church. That grace is connected. And yet you hear that all grace is permission. Some folk got the idea that grace is just a permission for me to do wrong. That is not what grace is. The grace of God, the way you know that the grace of God is really working and operating in your life is when it teaches you to deny the wrong and to not live an ungodly life. He said that the grace of God teaches us to live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Now church, when the grace of God is operating in your life, it does not mean it's, per, it's permission to do more and more sin and you're covered. It means that the grace of God is pulling you further away from that old lifestyle. I don't hear nobody here this morning. And making you live more like Jesus. And that's what I want to talk. Not only church is there a saving grace and a justifying grace and a teaching grace. But then there's something that is shown in the scripture that is an enabling grace. Enabling grace. It's what Paul was talking about in the book of Corinthians when he said that he had a thorn in the flesh. Y'all remember that, don't you? And, and he said that that was a thorn that was given to him, some kind of affliction, some kind of problem, some kind of thing. And he said, I pray and I pray and I pray on three different times and I beg God to take this problem from me and some of y'all can find yourself in the same shoe as Paul because you can say preacher I've been through some things in this year alone that I pray and I pray and I pray and I've asked God to remove these things out of my life I pray and I pray and I pray and I've asked God to work different things out in my life but God is trying to get you to realize I'm not going to remove the problem nor am I going to take you out of the problem but I'm going to give you the grace to be able to handle the problems that you are facing in this life three times church God came back with the same answer and enabling grace my grace is sufficient for you I'm not taking it back. I'm not taking you out of it. I'm going to allow you to go through this, but my grace will be sufficient for you. In other words, church, Paul took his thorn in the flesh to the throne of grace. He took that thorn in the flesh into the presence of God. And God gave him the power and God enabled him to be able to deal with the challenges that came into his life. And he gave him a special grace to be able to deal with that. Church, when you have enabling grace, you can do things and deal with things that would break other people. You can live with things, church, and you can deal with things that would crush other people down. The pressure that would wipe other people out, you are able to stand up under it when you have the grace of God. I'm talking about an enabling grace. That's what Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16 was talking about when he said, Let us come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain help in the time of trouble. Which means that when you find yourself in troubled times, you need an enabling grace to be able to get you through that problem. Some of y'all know this. Sometimes God does not shield us and just take us out of the problem and give us a perfect, beautiful life. But sometimes we have to go through crisis and trouble. But with that 
comes an enabling grace from God. We go before the throne of grace in the time of trouble to obtain help, and he gives us that enabling grace. I love it, church. Grace is an important word in the New Testament. 125 times grace is mentioned to be unto you. Grace be. It must be important to be mentioned that much in the Bible. Grace be unto you. Grace, enabling grace, teaching grace, justifying grace. All graces be upon you. The Bible talks about in Ephesians the riches of his grace. The glory of his grace. And in the text that I read today, Zerubbabel had been sent back to by God to rebuild. To start something. To rebirth the city of Jerusalem and the temple of God. And the scripture said that he started trying to rebuild the temple first. And when he started rebuilding it, the Bible says something happened. The Bible says suddenly, as he was trying to do what God had called him to do, a mountain appeared before him. Have y'all ever made up in your mind that you was going to do something for God? Or I'm going to change this certain area in my life? Or I'm going to purpose to do something in my life? And as soon as you get up to do what you said, here come a mountain up in your way. Here come something that you got to fight. Here come something that you got to stand up against. And I wish that we would get the mentality that just like the mountain up here, we serve a God that is able to move those mountains out of our way he said in his word that if you would have the faith not as a sunflower seed not as a watermelon seed but that of a mustard seed you can look at that mountain and say get out of my way and it's gonna move some of y'all need to just shout right now get out of my way the bible and then suddenly the mountain appeared church he asked a question to the mountain who are you? Oh, great mountain. Identify yourself. Who are you? Daring to stand between me and what God has called me to do and given me the grace to do. And church, just like Zerubbabel spoke to his situation, we got to learn how to speak to our situation, church. We got to stop looking at stuff and say, oh, it don't look good. It don't seem like it's going to work out. We remember, as we've been saying all year long, that we got faith over fear. And fear don't talk like that. Faith says, you know what? I may be going Going through, but after a while, God's going to bring me out and God is going to bring me through. He asked that question, who are you? Trying to get in between me and God. I want you to identify yourself. And I know that right by the spirit of God. I'm preaching to some people this morning who are facing some frustrating mountains. Some of us got financial mountains. That's everybody hand right there. Oh, that's me preaching. We got financial mountains. Somebody stay on that. We got financial mountains. Let's go again, somebody. We got financial mountains. Because of COVID, some of you that are business owners, now you got business mountains that you're trying to come against. And unemployed mountains, things that we are dealing with. And Zerubbabel said, who are you? Oh, great mountain, you shall become, listen to these words, church. He says, you shall become a smooth plane. I want to preach today that God's about to smooth some things out in your life. I believe more than five people just received that right now. God is about to smooth some things out, church, in your life. I know that you may be facing a frustrating mountain. I know that you might feel overwhelmed, but we serve the God who is able to enable you with grace to be able to overcome and to be able to have good success. You don't just have church grace to get to it. 
you got grace to get through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is not just a God to bring you through it, but he's a God enough to see you through until you get to the other side of it. Church, you don't have to have teaching grace. You don't just have saving grace that you got out of sin and it washed your sins away. You don't just have that precious justifying grace that makes you right before God. But this grace that I'm preaching today comes on you, church, and enables you to speak and deal with the challenges of life. To deal with the mountains and the giants that come against you. And you may be facing them today. But the Lord's word to you is I'm about to smooth some things out. I'm about to make those things smooth. I'm going to remove those mountains out of your way. And you're going to know that it wasn't Bobby. It wasn't Ray. But it was I, the Lord, that did it in your life. Because you don't just have those other graces. You have an enabling grace. And it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. I will revive your business. It ain't going to end. God says, I revive it for you again. I will revive your life. I will get you some employment. I will provide for you. And I'll speak to those mountains and tell them to get out of your way. Mountains of fear, mountains of uncertainty, mountains of doubt, mountains of all kinds of things we are facing on this morning. It ain't got no choice but to get out of your way in Jesus name. Church, God's going to level some mountains out. Even in the crisis that you find yourself this morning. Even in the season that you find yourself in this morning, I really feel what I'm preaching right now down in my soul. And watch this. The Bible said that he began to project. And when he did, there came problems from without. For the scripture said that the people of the land, squatters, had taken up residence and they didn't want to give it up. And they went out, y'all, and they got counselors. In our day, they went out and got attorneys. They went out and got them some lawyers, and they basically sued them and said, you can't do that. You don't have the right paperwork. Sounds like the government trying to stop the church, you know, or something like that. He said, you know, you ain't got the power to be able to do that. But Zerubbabel starts building, y'all. And for the next 10 years, nothing happened. He was just out there building, y'all. They got into all kinds of arguments. Things began to happen. And the scripture said that God came along and God gave a command it right in the middle of all of this. And I want you to put yourself in Zerubbabel's position. He's sitting there. He's discouraged. He's defeated. He's frustrated. It's one setback after another, after another, after another. Problems on the outside, problems on the inside. And then comes the word of the prophet who walks into his life and says these big words. The saith the Lord begin again. The saith the Lord I want you to begin again. I want you to start again. Child of God, just because you may have came to a dead end, it's not time for you to give up. It's not time for you to dig in the sand and say, I'm going to start right here. But God said he wants you to roll up your sleeve and start over again. It's time for you, church, to start again. It's time for you, church, to begin again. It's time for this nation that we live in. It's time for you. It's time for your business, your finances, or your shop. Whatever it is, it's time for you to begin again. Church, and when God gives a word, this is what I love about God. He always gives us the grace to be able to do what he's calling us to do. 
Glory to God. He always, church, gives us the grace to be able to do what he's calling us to do. I know back when that God called me to do what I'm doing now. I know that. He gave me a word. He called me. But he didn't leave it up to me to make it happen. He gave me, church, an enabling grace to grab a microphone and to do what it is that I'm doing right now. I didn't have it all at first, but he really, he gave me the grace to be able to do what I'm doing. I didn't just feed it to myself. And I'm telling you, church, that you have an enabling grace that God has put on your life to start over again. Thus saith the Lord to you, begin again. Start dreaming again. Start hoping again. Start fighting again. Start working again. Begin again. Look at your neighbor and say, try it again. Try it again. What they say, if at first you don't succeed, get yourself up and try again. Try again. Put yourself back into the game, church, and try again. And then he gave him the strangest commandment, y'all. He said, you know what? This is what I want you to do. I want you to take the cornerstone. Now, you got to understand in Jewish culture and in ancient Bible days, the cornerstone was the last stone. This was like a dedication of a building. You know how we cut ribbons? It was something like that. And you were to take that last stone, the head stone, and put it on after the building project was complete. But God said, no, that ain't how we're going to do it this time. I don't want you to do it that way. He says, I want you to take that stone. And I want you, because I'm about to start something new, I want you to see the beauty in this. If I ever start something, it doesn't have to look like it's finished. If I start it, I'm going to finish it. If I ever begin a thing, don't you worry about me completing that which I started. But the Bible said, he that hath begun a good work in you is faithful to complete it. The only question is, can he find anybody who is willing to hang in there long enough until God does it? Can he find anybody who is willing to not quit and to not give up? And he said, here, take that stone, that stone that is supposed to go on last after everything is built. He said, take it, and I want you to shout at the stone. What? And he said, I want you to shout two words. Grace, grace. He said, I want somebody to open your mouth for eyeball your neighbor and just look at him and say, grace, grace. Church, your words are very important in this season of your life. These words are very important. According to Proverbs 18, life and death are in the power of your tongue. So going into a new year, we ain't going to be talking fear. We are not going to be talking depression. We are not going to be talking fear. We are going to walk in the light as he is the light. And God is going to give you the strength. God is going to give you the grace to be able to make it through the dark times of your life. Glory to God. And he says, grace. I didn't say shout one time. I said double. Grace. Grace. So now here he is. People watching him. And he's talking to a rock. Grace. Oh, did you hear what I said? He's talking to a rock. We talking to a rock too. Yeah. Y'all got it? Yeah, yeah. In the middle of your storm, you got to go to the rock that is higher than you. Church, when you get down the rock bottom, you really learn how to appreciate the rock that's already at the bottom. Jesus Christ 
cornerstone, that stone that the builders rejected, but has now become the head of the corner. In the middle of a storm, you got to talk to that rock, church. You got to lean on that rock that is higher than you are. His name is Jesus. And he said, he said, grace, grace. And when he did, the Bible said that the spirits of God began to get released on that building project that they were doing. Glory to God. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but church, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by God's spirit, says the Lord. You can get off of drugs, you can get straightened out, you can get out of that situation, you can make that thing happen, you can get that business back to where it was, but grace, enabling grace. Is what we're going to need, church. Enabling grace needs to come on our families. Enabling grace needs to come into the church. Enabling grace needs to come into our business affairs and into our resources. And I'm standing here and I'm preaching to y'all today and I'm preaching grace, grace into your life. And God is going to fill us with this grace, church. So right now, Right now, I know y'all, right now, I want y'all, every single one of y'all, everybody listen to me, I want you to think about whatever that mountain is that is up against you right now. Some of y'all can say, preacher, it ain't a mountain, I got a couple of, whatever the mountains are in your life, I want you to get them in your mind right here, and just for a minute, I want y'all to say, grace, 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 grace. Uh, in every situation of your life, grace over my mind, grace over my marriage, grace over my ministry, grace over my children, grace over my mind, grace over my finances. Everywhere I walk, I need grace. Grace is what we need, church. Because what God starts. He's going to finish it. And some of us right now ready to throw in the towel. God said, hold on. Let me give you the grace to be able to handle this thing. Yeah, you standing right there on the brink of a miracle. Some of us standing right there at the door and we're ready to throw in the towel. God said, hold on just a little while longer. I'm going to give you the grace to be able to handle what it is that you're going through. And some of y'all can say, preacher, he ain't got to tell me. I've already been there. I've been down on my luck. Preacher, my back has been up against the wind. Preacher, I found myself in some troubling situation and I have to depend upon the grace of God. That's why I can see I once was lost but now I am found. I once was blind but now I can see all because of his grace. Because of the grace of God. Zerubbabel said, you know what? Mountain, you are in my way right now. But after I get off my knee and I get through talking to my God, you're going to be laid out. You're going to be a smooth plan. And some of y'all ought to stop worrying about some of the stuff that is standing up against you when you serve a God that the scripture said that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Lord will lift up a standard against him. God is all ready to fight your battle. God is ready to go before you and to give you the grace that you need to handle it. It's not by might. Not by strength. I'm not powerful enough to make it happen. But it's by my spirit. Can I tell y'all? The only reason you sit here at the almost to the end of 2021 is because of the grace of God. Some of y'all, you know it. Some of y'all have been sick this year and you thought that the sickness was going to take you out. But thank God that grace covered you and grace was right there by your side. We've been through, but we made it out because of God's grace. God says, you know what? Whatever that mountain is, speak grace to it. God says, I'm giving you the grace to be able to make it. 
And some of us, y'all know, because we come to church, and y'all know we put on our good, we put our good Halloween costume on when we come to church. You know, we covered up, we got our mask on, and we think we got our facade on, and we come in here, and you know, we sing loud, and you know, we amen, and we glory to God. But if you can really look into the mind of an individual, you see the things that they are dealing with, you wonder how that person ain't locked up somewhere, going losing their mind. You wonder how that person has not succumbed to pressure, how that person has not become overcome by depression, and the various things that they are facing, but it's the grace that God has given them to be able to make it through on Christ, the solid rock I said. All of the ground is sinking sand. All for the grace of God. I'm glad. Everywhere I go, y'all see me up here, y'all don't see these two men walking behind me, do you? I know y'all don't see them, but they're right behind me. Grace and mercy. Everywhere I go, they right behind me. They keeping me. They protecting me. They sustaining me. God, grace and his mercy. Some things you thought you would have never been able to have. Some things you thought about a while ago, man, if I ever have to experience that, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. But now that God has allowed you to go through it and you look back on it, you say it wasn't nothing but the grace of God. The grace of God kept my mind in perfect peace. The grace of God kept me from losing my mind. The grace of God came by my bed and it wiped those tears from my eye. The grace of God came and it gave me strength when I found myself being weak. It was nothing but the grace of God. Lord, I need your grace. I need it. Y'all, I can't make it a day without it. I need his grace. I can't make a step, church, without the grace of God. I can't make a move. I can't make a plan unless I have God's grace in my life. Again, grace, God giving us what we don't deserve. We sing the song often and we say, you know, have you ever thought about every little thing God has done in your life? We wouldn't be able to count it, y'all. We couldn't number it because new mercies we see every morning Great is the Lord's faithfulness. That's what I love about God, church. He's not a sometime God, but he's an all-time God. And just like God saw you thrown into the fire, God is good enough not just sit there and spectate and look at you, but God said, I'm going to get right down there in the fire with you. And when folk looking at you wondering why you have not been consumed by the fire, you can say, I know you can't see him, but there's another man down here. He's been loose with me, and he's walking around like the son of God. God, when you go through your storm, thank God you're not going through by yourself. But you got grace to go through it. You got grace to be able to handle it. Hope for grace. Y'all just, just think about where you were when God found you. If it had not been for God's grace, you probably wouldn't even be here at this moment. Some of y'all can tell the truth and say, preacher, I was there when they started shooting. I just ducked in time. Thank God. Thank God for his grace. Preacher, you can say, I was in some of the same places and stuff happened to other people, but God allowed me to make it out. It was not anything but the grace of God. Thank God. That he has not left us to our own demise, but he's given us grace. Bountiful grace, church. Every single day of our lives, even on the days when you don't feel good, you got grace. Even on the days, I'm talking about days with an S, when you got more days in a month than you got money. Oh, praise God. You got grace. To be able to get through it. 
and to be able to handle the situations that life throws our way. Church, I want you to know something going into a new year. This is the last Sunday of this year. And I want you to know something going into the next. You're going to need some grace. Yeah. You're going to need some grace. Why are you going to need some grace? Because you ain't perfect. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to need some grace. Why? Because you're naughty by nature. You got issues. You got problems. You got things that you're struggling with. You got things that you succumb to. You got things that overwhelm you. That's why you need God's grace. Grace is God looking down at our sinful ways. And while God is ready to hurl down fire from heaven, grace is saying, hold on now. Spam just a little while longer. Give them the opportunity. I thank God, church, this morning that God is long-suffering. I thank God that he don't have a quick temper like some of us, but I thank God that he's long-suffering. I thank God that he's patient. I thank God for that he's given us time, that he's given us time. Every day that you wake up, God is gracing you with time. What you didn't get right yesterday, let's work on it today. What you failed at yesterday, let's work at perfecting that today. God is giving you the grace to be able to handle it. Why is he giving you grace? Because one day, grace is going to run out. Because one day, the grace that you now enjoy will not be afforded unto you. Take advantage of the grace that God is affording unto you. You know, church, we live in a world that is full of uncertainty. You know, there is no certainty that when you leave your house in the morning, you're going to make it back. Not only is that an uncertainty, there is no uncertain thing. That when you leave and come back, somebody ain't gonna be the came and got all your TVs, got the lunch meat out the refrigerator, got the ties that you had in the garage, stole the lug nuts out the yard. I mean, they take anything ain't nailed to the ground. And if it's nailed to the ground, they go get a hammer and take it out the ground. There's no certainty that things will go the way that you want them to go. But one thing that is certain, one thing that is true, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake. I'll be right there. I'll be right there by your side. And can I tell you this? Some of y'all right now got a thorn in your flesh. And for some of y'all, it ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I know that ain't what you wanted to hear. You want to hear Trevante? He's about to take the thorn. Glory to God. No more thorn. That ain't true. For some, if not most, the thorn is going to remain. It's going to remain. Why is it going to remain? Because God wants you to learn to depend on his grace. Yeah. God, God wants to get you to the point to where you can stop trusting in yourself, stop trusting in other individuals, stop trusting in your own knowledge and in your own merit, and God wants you to trust in him. God wants you to surrender to him. God wants you to give your all to him. God, God, hey, God wants somebody that's all or nothing. All or nothing. You know, any of y'all play cards? I like to play cards. You know, you play poker. You put everything out there. I ain't got nothing left behind. Y'all remember that? God wants somebody that's all in. He wants somebody that's devoted, sold out to his cause, to his plan, and to his will in your life. And while trying to get to where God wants you to be, you're going to need something called grace. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yourself. And we, cannot, we, and we don't have to imagine because I believe a lot of us see ourselves in the story of Zerubbabel. You know? I made up my mind, you know, I'm going to change. Any of y'all ever said that? I'm going to change. It didn't change. Praise God. But you say, you know what? I'm going to change. Any of y'all ever said you're going to do better and didn't do better? Praise God. You know, we, Lord, I'm going to do better. I'm going to change. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. You know what? And we say all of those things, church, but in order for you to be able to accomplish what you want to accomplish in this life, you are going to need the grace of God upon your life. You are going to need the favor of God upon your life if you expect to be able to make it. That's why I'm going into the new year year with a smile 
smile on my face, my heart is upright and my spirit is rejoicing because I have the grace of God upon my life. Let the bills come. My father is rich in houses and land. All power is in his hand. I may have sickness in my body, but he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with the strife I am already healed. Praise the name of the Lord. I am already healed by the blood of the Lamb. And that's the kind of man that the child of God has to walk around with. Why? Because you've been graced by God. You've been graced. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Here you go. That same wretch. Like, like you and me. Like us. Same the wretch like us. Brought you from blind state. To now you are able to see. You was out there lost. Some of us was walking around with a flashlight in the daytime. But look at us now. We've been found. To the glory of God. Grace has been made available to us. But it's up to you to live in the grace of God. I thank God. This is what I love about him. That he said he caused his rain to come down. On the just. Why are you grateful about that preacher? Because I ain't always just. And even on my unjust days, guess what? I need grace. Even when I don't do good, guess what? I need grace. Even when I haven't been all of who I need to be, guess what? I still need the grace of God. And I thank God that he loved us so much that he did not exclude us from his grace. But he included us into his plan, y'all. And we can be recipients of the grace of God. So I know all of us, we got plans. We got intentions about things that we're getting ready to do going into the new year. Some of us say we're going to live our best life. Glory to God. Go ahead and live your best life to the glory of the Lord. You go on out there and live every day like it's your last. You go on out there and you look at some of y'all coming out this year saying, worry about all that stuff. It's above me now. I'm leaving all of that stuff behind me. I'm not worrying about it. And that's the thing. So many of these things that we are worrying about and that we are fretting about. The Bible has already told us fretting not yourself because of evildoers. You ought not worry about who's out to get you. You ought not worry about who's working against you. You ought not worry about what Satan has set up to try to take you down because God has given you grace to be able to make it, to be able to handle it, what you're going through. So, let our prayer today be, Lord, give me more grace. Yeah. As he said, grace, grace. Lord, give us a double portion of your grace. Grace us, Father, to be a light in the neighborhood of Sweetwater. Grace us with that. Father, not only grace us with that, but grace us with resources so that we can be a blessing to those that are around us. Grace us, Father. Grace us so that we can be blessed in the city. Grace us so that we can be blessed in the field. Grace us so that we can be blessed in our going out and in our coming in. Lord, we need and that we're going to overcome the hurdles and the pitfalls of life. We're going to need grace. You're going to need it. You're going to need it in your life. So if you won't need it every now and then, ain't wrong with thanking God for it. Because he does not, church, have to do any of the things that he does. God ain't required to let you sit there and breathe in his air. It's God's air. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't nobody holding a gun in his head and say, keep the air on. He's doing it because you are a recipient of his grace and of his mercy. And just the mere thought that if God thought for one second to cut your air off, guess what? Over with. Done. So since he 
is gracing you with opportunities like today to recognize where you are because the objective is in life is not to measure up how other people are walking with God, but how are you walking with the Lord? That's the objective in life. And it takes moments like this for us to take back and take a moment and really survey our own life and see have we been living how it is that God is a calling for us to live? And we see in certain areas in our life where we are not meeting up to God where it wants us to be, maybe that's the reason why his grace is not as prevalent as I would like it to be. Maybe there are certain things that did not have to come my way that have came my way because I wasn't where I needed to be. Because I didn't have the faith that I needed to. Some of us, unlike Zerubbabel, would cause the mountain to let us run the other way. We see the mountain, oh, that's just too big. Let me go the other way, child. I ain't gonna make it that way. Uh, that's just too big. You remember what Caleb said? Give me my mountain. Even as a, at an old age, when he had been through all of that stuff, and some of us 25 trying to get away from the mountain. He said, give me my mountain. Why could he say, give me my mountain? Because he knew God was going to give him the grace to be able to handle what it was that he was standing up against. So I want to encourage the believers here today that whatever mountain or mountains are in your way, God can move you. I'm so glad and honored. I take privilege in telling you that God is able to take those crooked ways and make those paths straight. God is able to take mountains that are in your life. And as the scripture said, God is going to make those things smooth. Like, as if they were never there. As if they were never a threat. As if they were never blocking your way. God is able to do not a partial job, but a complete work in your life, church. If you attempt to give him that opportunity, even today, there may be those of you here that because of the mountains that you have in your life and because of the various things that you've experienced, even in this year alone, truth be told, a lot of us have lost faith. Truth be told, for those that have not lost it, they're struggling with it. Because of situations, because of circumstances in life. But find courage today knowing, church, that God is able to change those situations. God is able to turn those things around, not for the worse, for the better. He's able to do a work in your life. And even if you are here today and you find yourself weighed down, because let me tell you, these things will weigh you down. They will weigh you down. And when they weigh down on the inside, it'll show up on the outside. That's why we walk around looking upset, looking like somebody uh, spitting our coffee this morning, waking up like we woke up on the wrong side of the bed, like we ain't got no joy because of the various things that we are going through. Trip. Like I told y'all Wednesday night, the world, no, the devil can take what you don't give up. Oh, yeah. The devil stole my joy. How are you going to take what God gave? Church, whatever you're experiencing, what you're going through, God is able to help you. If you feel weighed down by the troubles of life, that's why he told you, cast your cares on me. I don't want you weighed down with it anyway. Cast it on me. Why? Because I care for you. And I care about what you're going through. For those of you here today that have not yet begun to experience the grace of God in your what better day than the last Sunday of 2022? Some of the, how many, okay, some of us that missed 52 chances this year alone. 53, however many, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of us have missed out on several opportunities to make the decision that we need to make. So since God is affording you this opportunity, I put it on. Who told you you was going to see 2022? I ain't speaking no bad luck on nobody, but who told you that you was going to make it? Nobody did. How you planning on getting there? By the grace of God. 
That's how you plan on getting out. That's how you plan on being successful and thriving in the new year. By the grace of God. So maybe you're here today, as I say, and you have not yet began to experience the grace of God in your life. Praise God that he has afforded you one more opportunity. Today that you hear his voice, or in your heart, he's knocking at the door of your heart, even now. Church, don't nobody know where you are with God better than you know. We can speculate and we can say, but don't nobody know how your walk and how your relationship is with God better than you know. Some of you know you don't need to leave here today without making a change in your life. Somebody need to come forward and say, you know what? I have not been the Christian that I needed to be. And I need prayer that God will give me the strength to go into a new year to be all of who I can be for God. Some can say, preacher, I've been depressed as long as I can remember. I got anxieties and other things that I'm dealing with and all of that stuff, it just becomes so much for me sometimes that I just don't know where I'm going. You need to come and you need to request the prayers of the church. Let us pray for you. God is able to get you through that. You don't have to succumb to the things that you are going through, but God is able to give you the strength to be able to sustain and to make it through. If you are here today and you stand a guilty distance away from the Lord, you don't know him as your Savior and as your Lord at this time. You need to come to Jesus. You need to come to Jesus. Hear in his word. Believe in what it is that you've heard. Repent of your sins. Confess to Christ as your Savior. And then bury with him in baptism. Allow the Lord to add you to his church. And the difference is, it does not mean that once you get in Christ that you are now outside of trouble. Y'all can say, preacher, I know that ain't right. It does not mean that once you are now in Christ, that he wraps you up in cotton so your feelings never get hurt again. It does not mean that God wraps you up in bubble wrap because you're just fragile and you need to be handled lightly. But it means that you're still going to go through, but now you got grace to go through. If you desire that grace, if you desire a closer walk with God, if you desire strength, for your mind, for your family, for your relationship. Come to Jesus today as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Show me the way. Child, 
your child sit him down down your lord i need i need i need your power so show me lord say show show me show me the way Show me the way, said, show me the way, Lord, said, show, show me all oh, the way. Take my hand and guide me, Lord, guide me, Lord, and show, show oh, me the way. Show me the way, Lord. Sit, I am down. I need, I need, I need oh, your power. Show me, Lord, sit, show me, show me the way. 